Hi, uh, this is my problem today. Is um, went and bought a R8 coupling for my uh, face cutter, and unfortunately, instead of buying a 7 16th threaded drill bar, I bought M12. My fault. So it means that all my systems are 7 16 If I recreate this one in uh, still with a half inch bar but an M12 uh, thread in the end it'll come in handy in the future anyway and it means it increases the versatility slightly of the uh, mill I've got a bit of half inch uh, bright or cool roll and I've been searching for to something to do the hexagon heads with I've got an old pin bolt for my draw bar what I'm thinking of doing is actually uh, Cut the ends off. We actually use this bit of old steel. It's only probably a bit of a hot rolled, you know, black mild steel. So uh, that's the uh, project to make a M12 draw bar. This is the drawing for the draw bar. As you can see, it's uh, 300 mil long. The threaded end will be 12 and 30 millimeters long. The far end will be a, an interference fit. If if I feel that necessary, I might I might pin it as well. The uh, the nut size at the top. This is for tightening the draw bar. It doesn't. It only needs a nip. The uh, outer diameter. I'm, I've already machined. Uh, well, I will machine to. Um, to 21.7 once I mill the flats you can see that the outside will just clip the flats and uh, the size of the head is the same size as the imperial head on my other draw bar on the imperial draw bar so I can use the same spanner on each so it will be metric at the far end actually going into the uh, R8 adapter but the nut on top to, to tighten the draw bar up will be exactly the old imperial size. Uh, it's um half inch bar, so it's a half inch nut, which is um, we can look into uh, machinery's handbook to uh, work work out the flats, but all I'll do is simply copy what exists on my other draw bar. Uh, this is machinery is a handbook. As you've seen from uh, the measurement I made from the old head was 19 millimeters across the flat. So I was just wondering what is the correct uh, distance across the flat for that nut. Fasteners we need. So fasteners. And if I can zoom in a little bit, we want various um, bolts metric, which is what we don't want. We want the bolts, screws and nuts and washers. So uh, if you run down through there, you got hex nuts, that's what we want. Uh, for 1499. 14 95 98 14 So right here we got the glasses. Here we got uh, width across flats in the size of the bolts. So uh, half an inch is uh, maximum 0 0.750 minimum across the flats 0 0.736. So if you can, I can zoom into that. Take that point there. Right. So we want uh, 0.750 or just under. So what I'll do now is get my calculator. Okay. So uh, probably okay. I don't know if you can actually see that or not. But 0.7 five 
times 25.4, 19.05. And uh, as you know, we measured across the flats 19, so it's just a shade under maximum width, which is, uh, I, I don't like loose fitting spanners, you know, loose fitting nut, nut head, bolt heads. So, with that out of the way, on the opposite page here, we've got the head angle, the, the chamfer angle, angle, which is, uh, it says minus 15, the way I see that is inclusive 30 degrees, and at each individual side is 15 degrees or minus 15 degrees, whichever way you want to look at it. That's where you can get the information from. If you if you haven't got something to copy, About uh, 35 mil long was uh, one, two, three, 35 mil long. Somewhere around there. 21.7 mil diameter. I'm not going to put this in
I said no for it. No, uh, I'm sliding down to full depth. No. Got the tail stuff. Release the. Uh, There's no taking in 25 mil. 10. Okay. Yeah. Well, uh, the setup I'm using here is quite simple. If I come back a bit, you'll see what I'm actually doing. I'm just set up. Put it on zero. Uh, now, now I can actually wind it in. I want to go in eight and a half millimeters. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight point eight point five mil. Okay, our next thing is to uh, cut a bit of bar off. I think we can do back in, approximate, and trim it up to the later. And pop a bit of mark on there. Check it. Yep. Right, this is our piece to cut off. So far, okay. I've measured the size of that uh, 10 mil hole I drilled, and the closest I'm getting is 10.5 mil. So, I'm going to take I've, I've put this in the uh, multi size chuck. Surprisingly, it did close down a full well, a couple of mils actually. I've marked it off the depth of cut, so I'm going to reduce this down to say 11 mil. OD and then start taking it steady so I can get an interference fit. Okay.
I've decided I want to uh, pin this one as well just to make sure I'll do it in the same operation as uh, cutting the hexagon flats on it but to mount it in the uh, drill chip I, I got these blocks these are ER40 hexagon blocks from Art Euro Trade made by somebody called Mr. Stevenson I suppose because they're called Stevenson's blocks don't know that guy but um, there is a couple of shortcomings one, one thing is on my particular vice uh, is a rotatable vice and one of the knock, knock, uh, the lock nuts for the rotating table is too high and it catches the thickness of the um, this uh, holding nut so all I do is drop a bit of something parallel in to raise the block a bit okay so now the next thing is they're not long enough um, it means that the vice is like pinching one end so it's gonna try to uh, hold it as a taper well anybody it's it'd be nice if I had one this end as well Nobody's going to buy, or oh, I can't see anybody buying two hexagon blocks just for the sake of keeping the jaws true. But most people would buy a, a second block uh, for a square, for doing square things. And uh, obviously, this Mr. Stevenson uh, had the bright idea to have across the flats identical. So it's really, we can put them in both sides. We're in fact, you know, no, I can't. So in in that case, I'd say stand that. Now I can I can grip tight. I'm not trying to create a V with it. Uh, bugger up the jaws, like you know. And of course the the bar can travel right through it, so it could, you could use a long bar if necessary. Anyway, that's the setup. So uh, I'm gonna drill. I was thinking of drilling and pinning this, but uh, I might just drill, tap, and put a slug screw in, a stainless steel slug screw, just to help. Right, we'll set this up now. I need enough clearance for the cutter to cut the end there. So I'd say about that. And this will be resting there. Just a little bit more. All right, this is a meth my method laser uh, beam to center this up. In, in actual fact, uh, I've reduced the light in here. Reduce the light in. Uh, there. Um, that's what I use to center. I've used uh, wigglers, you name it, all sorts, and they're all about the same accuracy, and it's quite surprising, even the basic ones are quite accurate. Just want to see. I'm not into machine tapping. So what I'm going to do? Gently start it off. Okay. 
I'd rather. Not my cup of tea. I think I'll, I'll do this faster than I'll be much happier doing this plan. Just making another minute to be thinner shaft, I'm not gonna do the cuts because I haven't got no support on the end. I'm guessing around this is, but uh, I need to fuck around now, so
in there. Sorry, I'll take it back. I'll take it back. Thing, but it will do. There we go. Well, I've just crammed it in the uh, chuck. Now uh, I'll set the. Uh Okay, until I can rig up a decent camera in lighting, uh, that's my collet chuck, multi uh, size, it's a Bernard multi size collet chuck. That's a, a bit of bar hanging out, I've already recessed it by 1.1 mil. The thread itself is 1.07 mil deep, let's see how we get on. Uh, I've uh, chamfered the end. I've set up the, the cutting tool, which is an uh, insert. I've got a dial gauge to see how much feeding I'm, I'm using. Uh, I've put the gears on here for, for M12. I use change gears. Um, there can be a bit of a pain, but um, you've got more variety, more, more choice than, than gearboxes so uh, there's always pros and cons with these things now my problem is because it's uh, imperial lathe um, because it's an imperial lathe 
you've got to keep the uh, feed screw here engaged all the time so once I engage that and start cutting once I start engage that one and start cutting I can't touch that one I can I can start I can stop I can turn the motor off I can change uh, speed gears I can knock him out of gear turn the truck and re-engage him because the gear chain is direct from the spindle to the cross slide through gears so no matter what I do, this is this is before the spindle. This is the drive to the spindle. You see, so any gears I change, it doesn't matter. What I mustn't do is take them out of engagement here, or I'm really uh, going to mess it all up. You see, which means I've got to be I can reverse the motor. Actually, reverse the motor here um, and drive him backwards and come back again. But as long as I don't disengage that one I'm okay sometimes it's easier to turn the chuck by and knock him out of gear and just turn the chuck by hand but uh, we'll see how it goes it's a bit laborious because there's no brake on the, uh, the Colchester Master uh, you've got to wait for the motor to wind down and restart him in the opposite direction I don't like changing polarity and it, it, it just gives the motor a hard, hard time and I don't really I can't see the point in doing that so I'll well, see if I can film the best I can or at least a couple of the runs okay uh, first things first first I want to set zero uh, for the feed in dial gauge and then I want to check that I've, I've got the right gears and I've got the right pitch so I'll uh, pop a bit of red marker die on on this one to see what's going on and we're just touch in there and the dial is basically virtually on zero in fact I'll go with to say there yeah, that's zero so we'll start from that point Gauge. And I'll do a cut. Right, I'm in, I've engaged. I'll knock him out of gear now. From here on in, it's rather difficult to, to work with the camera in the window, but in the way, but uh, that's, the, that's the scratch pass there. I'm trying to get some focus here. just about see it but if I put the the, the, the thread gauge line lines up so here on in I'll just machine it without the, the uh, video well here are I've just completed the thread and I've gone in the correct depth of 1.07 which was a good fit I don't want a good fit, I want a loose, slightly loose fit. So I've just gone in 0.02 of a mil further to 1.1. Uh, .1. And give them two pass, spring, uh, one spring pass. That's probably a little bit uh, snugger than it's needed for the, for the purposes designed for. I want to spin this thing down with no problems, but I'm, I'm happy with that. I'm quite happy with that. We can test that out on the mill now.
fit. The first chance I've had to test this away. So far, so good. This is the arbor in question. Yeah, yeah, the thread is a little bit tighter than that. Oh, he's okay. He's fine. Okay, so we'll lift him up. There you are. There you have it. 